Hey everybody, over the next few videos, we're gonna get into the properties available to the flex items. Now, flex items are those child items which reside in a flex parent container. And the first one that we're gonna start off with here is called Align Self. Now, previously with parent container items, we saw that we had access to Align Items and also to Align Content. And since we learned those, we're already going to be very familiar with the values that we can use with Align Self. The basic difference is that Align Self acts sort of like an override for the individual child items. So whereas Align Items set a value for all of the child items, we can now go in in more fine-grained detail and align each one of the child items separately if we so desire. So just for the record, before we actually go and use the Align Self property, Let's lay out the values that we can use with Align Self. And actually, they're exactly the same, really, as Align Items. So we have Stretch, we have Flex Start and Flex End, we have Center, and we have Baseline. And I'm going to show you all those. Woohoo! Let's get started, actually, by setting an Align Items property on the parent container itself. So if you haven't watched the previous videos, what I have here is some very basic markup in my HTML, I have this outer div with the class of parent, and that's that container div, which is containing these blue box child item divs. Each of these has a class of child, and this text content one, two, three, and four, so we can distinguish each one of the boxes. Now our setting so far is we have that display of flex, like I mentioned, on the parent container. By default, they're laid out in this row formation, because justify content by default is row, and as well, Align items by default is stretch. So each one of these boxes is stretching the full height of the container. And the container's height here is 200 pixels. So even though we don't see the justify content and align items properties set here explicitly, those are the inbuilt defaults. But let's come in here and let's actually set align items to something other than the default stretch. So we'll say align items, and let's set it to flex start. Let's save, and now we can see that all of the child items are aligned at the start here of the cross axis. So now, like I said, if we want to override this align items of flex start, we can do so for any of these individual child items. So again, we're getting more granular, we're getting more specific. Now, there are different ways that we can access these child items in our CSS, but let's use nth of type. And if you're not familiar with nth type, I do have a video here on the channel, which you can reference if you need to. Let's go ahead and we'll just randomly select that third child item. So what we can do is we can say dot child, and we'll use nth of type, and we'll select the third one, and let's give this an align self property, and let's set that to flex end. And notice now that this third child div has gone to the flex end, or the end bottom of the cross axis. So one thing to note here is that align self, if we want to think about what the default of align self is, it's not actually stretch, as it is with align items, but rather align self gets its default from whatever the parent is set to. So in this case, align self, before we actually came in here and set it to flex end, it was set to flex start, and we were able to override that by coming in here and saying align self flex end. So just to show you, we could also do align self stretch like this. And now it stretches from the top of the cross axis to the bottom. Right? We already saw flex end. The default was flex start in this case. We can do center. And now just this third one is aligned to the center of the cross axis. And of course, we can select any of these child divs, and we can have all of them aligned in different ways. Like we could have the first one aligned to the flex end, the second one aligned to the flex start, and so on. But we'll finish up here with a look at baseline. And in order for this one to work with align self, we're actually going to have to have another child item set to baseline as well. Because the thing is with baseline, what baseline does is, it aligns the item according to the baseline of its text content. And in order to use align self baseline on an individual item, we're going to need another item's baseline to make reference to. So let's just randomly get the second child item. 
let's say dot child, we use nth of type again, and we'll do nth of type 2. And what I'm going to do first of all, in order to really see how baseline works, I'm going to change the font size of this second item, and I'm going to make it really large, because I want to show how we can align the third item's baseline to the second one's. So the second one's baseline is going to be around here, right, right under the letters. So right now if I came into my third item and I said align self baseline, let's see what would happen. So I saved and you can see that because we didn't have any other child items set to baseline, it just went to the default flex start. But let's set the second one's align self property to baseline as well. And let's save. And now notice how the third one, its baseline, lined up with the second one, which would be about right here. All right, so that's Align Self. If you already know Align Items, you should feel pretty comfortable with Align Self. And really, the key to understanding Align Self is to remember that it's an override for Align Items on a parent container element.